Welcome back, guys, to another episode where Kyle's microphone did not record. So you're going to listen to me kind of explain what we're doing, and we'll get through this. Hopefully, this is the last time. As you can see, we're prepping for roof steel finally on that back porch area, and we've got some valleys to deal with. So we're going to talk and show how the valleys are done. But one thing you'll notice is that I always try to not just overlap our eave trims, but rather make sure that you notch and slip those notched edges into the hems on your trims. Now with the valley pan, what I like to always do is line up my first piece so that it's straight at the bottom and pointed directly to where I want that valley to end up and you see me marking the underside that way i get a perfect mark on the sheet and then i'm going to give myself an inch and a half overhang on that and that is so the valley pan matches the inch and a half overhang on my roof steel now one thing you're going to notice is that i'm going to leave the middle of the W Valley long, and you'll see why in just a second, but you don't wanna cut that off right away. Now what I'm doing is cutting it and manipulating that W so that it closes and if you look up there from the ground, you're not going to see into that W as easily. Now, there's going to be a gutter on this entire thing. And all the more reason, I just think it looks cleaner, looks more professional, and doesn't take a whole lot of time. To me, it's totally worth it. Now that I've got that bottom piece of W Valley where I want it, I need to get my measurement for the second piece. And what I'm using is the Stabila Tech level. It's going to give me the exact angle that I want. So it's basically a big protractor. The nice thing is if you don't know where you want it, it has a digital readout. So you can put it to the exact angle that you're desired. So here I already know what they were supposed to be, but I used it just to double check. And now I'm going to cut where it's going to slip up underneath those connection trims. And you'll see what I do. You don't just make a cut. You got to give yourself a dam so that any wind driven rain doesn't work its way up the valley and get into your connection. One really nice thing about uh, the proper overlap, which I always try to go 16 inches or so on the W Valley connection, is it self-aligns itself really nicely. And don't forget to use a good sealant at that joint. We always use an OSI Quad Max and we find it to be the best. Once I've got everything where I wanted it, I do like to take the zip tape, which is on the entire roof, and just add an extra level of protection connecting the trim to the sub sheeting. So I don't think it's really required and a lot of post framers do not do this, but as you can see, protecting all of those edges and making sure to roll that tape is just going to give you an added insurance. Now it's finally time we can start putting roof steel up here on this porch roof. Now I say it's time but we still have to put our closure strips that's gonna go down at the eave and it's gonna protect any wind-driven rain or really 
anything from going up inside those ribs. But you got to make sure before you lay steel on any sheeting to clean it off. Otherwise, if there's any dirt, any rocks, anything, it will show through on your metal. Don't forget, make sure you properly lay out top and bottom to the specified dimension of your steel. For us, that's three foot. So we wanna make sure that every sheet is laid out to a three foot dimension so we don't get off and we can maintain a perfect square and a perfect straight line down at your eave. You'll notice here where we connect to that corner of the building that our sheet has that roll up going up underneath of that connection trim and that is going to prevent any wind driven rain from making its way under that connection trim and going into the building it's going to hit that roll up and it's going to come out the bottom of our steel and run out to the gutter like it should now it's finally time to work into that valley but first in order to know where our cuts are we got to snap some lines so that way we don't mistake our angle or our pitch of the sheet You'll see here we're making a three foot reference line and that's going to give us an exact space or place to get our angle for the steel. It should be the same angle we've been doing, which it is. You can see there on the protractor, the 43.9. That's been that angle throughout the entire project. And with mathematics, I'm able to lay out where the edge of every sheet is going to hit that valley line. And that's going to give us reference lines to go off of when measuring for our first sheet of steel. Here we're going to be using an AST sealant tape. This is commonly used for hips, valleys, or other closures. And we're keeping it an inch up from where our cut actually is on the steel. And you're going to see the sheet is going to be pushed into that. And that foam is going to expand and fill and close the rib. Right here I'm trying to tell my microphone that we're going to be putting fasteners up that valley. Three of them, one in each minor on every panel and that's going to lock that down. Now I know a lot of you are going to be like, I can't believe you're screwing into the valley. I totally get it, but unless you are going to spend a lot more money to put on a standing seam roof that does not have any fasteners, that hems around a connection in the valley, which we've done and looks great, it's just a hard sell on a project like this. These washers are made and uh, are expected to last 30, 35 years. And like any project, like any material, they have a lifespan. And so you're gonna have to do a little bit of pre preventative maintenance. And I think that's just one of the things that's accepted with this form of construction and why it's really so affordable. Now, while we're sitting here working, I will mention, cause maybe somebody picked it up, but most of you probably didn't even notice, the ribs in the valley do not line up and there was no way around it. I had to have one spot on this building due to the dimensions, due to the layout where they just weren't going to line up and I had to make that decision. I figured the back of the building here was going to be the best place for that and I don't think anybody's even going to really notice. What I'm doing here is cutting the end of my gable trim uh, for our gutter detail and it always looks a little bit weird at first because it's just hanging out there. But once the gutter gets installed, it really does, I think, make sense because it kind of hides the corner or the end of our gutter, keeps everything looking seamless and like it's just one piece, like it's part of the building, like the detail was meant to be that way, not just an added afterthought that just bothers me when that's, you know, the case. And if we can prevent it, I always try to think about how to make it look as good as possible. Check out this uh, gable end detail. I love it when I have the opportunity to do the one piece. Not only does it give you a nice connection on the top where water is not going to make its way in potentially, but also it just, it honestly self aligns the peak to be exactly where you want it and makes things real easy.
Yep, those are magnetic boots. Cougar paws, they make them for roofers and they really do help make you feel real comfortable. Not all of us can be wearing $160, I don't know, Nikes, whatever Greg's wearing there. I know they're not cheap, and but <laughs> not for me. Look good though, Greg, you look good. You can notice there on the end of that ridge cap, we've got some foam closure, and that's going to prevent up to 110 mile an hour wind driven rain from driving into that end. And since this video, I've actually changed this detail, so you'll have to stay tuned to some future videos to see how I'm doing that now. I think it's an improvement, and that's kind of the whole point of the game to continually improving, finding new ways to do things. So, like always, if you guys see something I'm doing, that you think I could improve upon, let me know. I just wanna kinda give a little perspective on being a contractor and how gratifying it is to kinda take a step back, look at your work, look at your hard work, the stuff that you did with your hands, and be able to appreciate the fact that it's something that you and your team did and you did it to the best of your ability. And that's, I think, what's missing in a lot of trades, or I should say a lot of careers, versus the trades. I mean, look at this, we built this, we did this, and it wasn't easy, but it sure is gratifying. I think I've come to realize that what really draws me to post frame and this style of construction is the lines. Everything I do, everything we build, has the ability to just have all these awesome, crisp lines. And I think it just helps soothe my OCD or something, but I just really love it. So this is my hip cap here. It's a custom hip cap. Wait, what? My microphone works again? Awesome. It's basically just a simple five by five with a hem. The hem is on here so that it stays nice and rigid. Um, no matter what I do, when I put a fastener through these uh, hems or by the hems, it's gonna put a little bit of an oil can. I can't avoid that. There's a couple different details that we have done in the past, but they're not really that good. Uh, I don't think for this we could do some sort of a clip system similar to like a standing seam where basically here in the flat of the rib I put like a reverse J channel um, here so assume like a piece of trim that's uh, got another leg here basically a Z and that goes here and then this trim would basically slide right over top of it it's totally doable it's a ton of work and um, you know this whole system has a, an exposed fastener so that's kind of what we do maybe one day uh, we'll make the jump um, and do some hidden fastener hip caps I don't know I'd be interested to see or hear from you guys what you think is that really worth it I guess the biggest thing is wait till I'm done see how it turns out and then tell me if it's worth spending probably three to four times the amount of time to make the other system work. Kind 
gonna massage that. Oh, cut myself. Together. All right, Zach, let's get this in the center and then, so this is an AST sealant tape and we can, we can use it to fill seams and joints, seals out moisture, wind, cold, and vermin. It's really nice because you can use it around any openings in your valleys, your hips, but this doesn't breathe. So you don't want to use it as a ridge vent if you're wanting ventilation, but if you just want to seal stuff off, this stuff goes from a quarter to one inch and uh, it just works really well probably about 12 bucks a roll so it's uh it's not too expensive it's good peace of mind to keep any wind from driving any snow or water up into your hip okay Yeah, right about there. All right, well, there you go. There's the hip cap. Um, it's really hard to show it. There's so much light glaring off of it. Uh, the oil can, it didn't oil can too bad, I'm sure, depending on the light, you're going to see just the ever so slight dimple location of each screw, and that's the worst part about a hip cap, but um, overall, I think it looks really good. All the ribs lined up. Everything's pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, make sure you guys drop a comment down below. Tell me what you think of the hip. If any's got any resources for a better hip cap system, I'd love to see it, so make sure you share that as well. Now I'm missing the last valley for right above this porch in the front, so I'm not able to finish that porch roof. Instead, we moved on to the ceiling underneath the porch roof. Whew, let me tell you guys, hard day, long day, Friday. It's been a long week. We've been pushing to wrap this job up, and I, I kind of knew we weren't going to get it done. But that's uh, you know the way it goes. You got to have goals and uh, things to help push you along. Otherwise, if you just say, "Ah, oh, we'll get it next week," then you'll get it next week, and you won't try to do it this week. But uh, we got a, probably another day or two at the most to finish this exterior up. And then we gotta wait for concrete to be poured so we can set our doors. And then once the doors are set, this wall here that we're next to, we can do some Versetta stone and finish it off. But other than that, uh, we're about done on this thing. So we see some valley pan on the, maybe Tuesday. So in a couple days, we'll see our valley pan. And then we can finish up the roof above us and as well as the gable out here on the front of this porch. But it is really turning out pretty good. So I'll leave you with some awesome drone footage. Hopefully, we'll see. Haven't taken it up yet, but I'm optimistic. Later. Like always, guys, um, it would mean a lot to me if you hit that subscribe button. I know about 60, 70% of you that are watching are not subscribed, and that's totally cool. But hey, if you're going to hang around, if you're going to watch, if you're going to, you know, enjoy the content, just hit that subscribe button. And if you already are subscribed, thank you so much. Um, this is not my business, but I surely enjoy it, and I will continue to do it as long as people are enjoying it as well.